are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Reality Scoop. Today, I have a very wonderful guest with us from the Connecticut Cat Connection. Welcome the director, Marianne Vuig. And our special guest today is um, Ellie. And she's looking for a home. I hope you can help. Thanks for tuning in. So Marianne, thank you so much for joining us today here on Reality Scoop. So you're from the Connecticut Cat Connection. Are you one of the founders? Yes, I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how long has the Connecticut Cat Connection been uh, in operation? Uh, it became a nonprofit in 2007. Okay. So we've been um, almost 10 years now. Oh, um, wonderful. Operating at different at different levels uh, with, um, and we've increased with helping cats over the years. Okay. And um, you've recently moved because you were, have you, you were always in the Windsor area or? We were always in the Windsor area. Uh, we started off first renting a facility for about four years. Okay. Um, and then about two years ago, uh, we moved on to actually uh, purchasing our own uh, building, our own property, uh, to be able to make the adjustments that we need to make the facility more cat friendly. Okay. And it's it's okay. easier to do when you when you own it. Yeah. But it's definitely. more expensive too. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So um, how has your how has your organization started? Like, did you partner with other agencies in the area? Uh, what what do you do for fundraising? How can people help? Um, we well, how they can help is we do fundraising. Uh, we're actually working at uh, doing some programs now. Um, uh, so we do different uh, events. Let's say at a restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, we do. Um, uh, get-togethers. We were at a brewery in Enfield a few months ago. Oh, nice. Uh, so we uh, we have a few events that are scheduled that we can share with you, okay. you know, later on. And uh, we try to get people out to attend and be part of those programs so to help us keep you know, raise money and help that as everything is a hundred percent that goes to the to the cats. Mm -hmm. So um, how was the, the Connecticut Cat uh, Connection founded? How did it all begin? Um, well, it began with uh, feeling bad for some of the cats that need help. Mm -hmm. uh, st started to work with other groups, um, or at least one other group, and uh, just got more and more involved in helping with their website and, mm -hmm. and doing adoptions and then doing fostering. And then uh, things sometimes change, and then I, s I branched out um, on my own, and then I had to find homes for a lot of cats that were in my house Aww. at the time. Wow. Um, and it was, it's more difficult for people sometimes to come to you personally. Mm -hmm. So uh, then that's where the, uh, we found rental space. Okay. Because uh, it was easier for people to come to the cats than for the cats to, to go to, to the them. people. Yeah. We were doing uh, adoption events, but the cats sometimes didn't do well trans uh, uh, traveling. Traveling, yeah. It's like taking your cat to the vet, they get all mm -hmm. jittery. Uh, jittery. Yeah. So that worked. And from there, we were able to start. Uh, to uh, get volunteers because mm -hmm. uh, people would come and, and take care of the cats and help with the many different functions. Mm -hmm. uh, we are always in need of volunteers that uh, obviously love cats, but um, you know to take care of them, feed them, clean them. It's a lot of time. It's time consuming. Very time yeah. consuming. Um, and we have a lot of needs as well for people to help with fundraising, uh, table solicitations, mm -hmm. um, you know, other uh, uh, needs that they don't necessarily have to be doing cat care. Right. There's other things that can be done right. outside of the adoption center. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I was going to say, 
Uh, do you work with other nonprofit organizations, local groomers, vets? Um, who are some of the people that are in your network that you rely on to, to help you? Well, in terms of other organization, we, we try to help each other, especially mm -hmm. if there's um, an overflow. But uh, mo most times everyone works pretty independently. Okay. Um, in terms of veterinary care, we work with many different types of vets depending on the need okay. and, the, and the urgency. Urgency, yeah. Um, and we have worked um, a little bit with a local uh, grooming uh, place okay. uh, in Windsor Locks, um, but we also do our own grooming. Oh, nice. Um, inside for the cats, I mean, okay. in terms of just a grooming in the sense that we shave them down because many of them come with mats. Mats, yeah. You know, where they, where they, they need, uh, uh, you know, just a little bit of TLC. Yeah. Um, but we just do it for the kitties, obviously, in our facility. Okay. Now, um, do you work with uh, charities or animal hospitals in the area? Uh, or well, do you get, I, I should say, do you um, receive uh, cats from some of these organizations? Like if there's overflow from the no-kill shelters, do you yes, take them? Uh, we do. We actually, um, we try to help where we can, but we, we also take in cats from high-kill high shelters. Oh, okay. Um, where if, if we didn't save them, they would be euthanized. Yeah. Um, and we also take in cats from uh, people who call us uh, from surrenders. We've taken in strays mm -hmm. um, that, and then had their, all their vet care taken care of. Okay. Um, and then when they're ready, we put them up for adoption, and you know, and they have a second chance of finding a home. Nice. Because there's, there's a lot of lot of strays out there, and um, so we try to kind of blend it in and help as many people and situations as possible. Okay. Well, tell us about Ellie here. Ellie has a brother. Uh, as well, his name is Chicken, so we call him Chicken Nugget because he's <laughs> he's he's uh, orange. Because we we had another cat at the center named Chicken, surprisingly. Uh, Ellie's 12 years old, so he's her brother, and uh, it's one of the many uh, older cats that end up being surrendered uh, because of changes in people's lives. Right, you know, between uh, health and moving and allergies and and uh, you know just so many circumstances. So right now we're trying to find a home for Ellie and her brother as a pair. Mm -hmm. um, cats can live to up to 20 years old. Wow, you know, wow. So, and I've sometimes heard higher numbers. Mm. You know, indoor living certainly has promoted, uh, I think, a longer- Longer lifespan. Longer lifespan. Yes. And, you know, just the general health of the cat and, and its genetics. But, um, so this kitty has, you know, could have many years of love to give somebody. And you can see she's very friendly. Yes. Her brother's a little bit shyer. That's why his name is Chicken. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, they're, a, they're a pair. Uh, we have several pairs of seniors that are waiting for adoption because of these different mm -hmm. circumstances. And how long do you keep your cats? Like, what's the longest you've ever kept a rescue? Uh, well, we're a no-kill shelter, mm -hmm. so the longest, I think the longest cat we've had uh, that finally found a home is after four years. Oh, um, And she wow. was always pretty uh, reserved, and it just took that the right moment, the right family to come in um, and adopt. And she, was, and she was great. She was perfectly fine, but they, they tend to sometimes be a bit reserved, Yeah, you know, when you're um, in a, a busy place. Um, and we also have some kitties uh, that are really permanent. Uh, let's say permanent fosters due to health issues. Oh, okay. And then we have some in our facility that um, are not people friendly, at least not today. Yeah. So we're housing them as well and until, you know, we find another, either another opportunity or um, right now our plan is to expand and be able to house more uh, cats that are not adoptable okay. because of uh, their personality or they were, you know, they're, they're okay. just not, ready to be people friendly but they're great with each other oh okay uh, on that's interesting cats and are people friendly tend to be very good with other cats okay. so colony cats oh interesting so typically some of them may end up in barn situations but um there's not that many options and some of these cats because of health issues really need to be protected right right and given so, a home so what's the full capacity of your shelter like how many cats do you are you currently fostering right now uh, right now we house probably um, about between around 80 cats. 
Oh, wow. Yes. And wow, that's amazing. Yep, so. That's amazing. Yeah, you'd be surprised on how much you can put mm -hmm. in a space. Yeah. And they're all cared for by a team of volunteers that mm -hmm. come every morning and every evening. But we continually need to replenish okay. those shifts. Okay. Because people's, you know, situations change, change from yes. time to time. Um, so we're always, uh, we are promoting volunteers on our website. Oh, very good. Uh, so when you go on there, that's the first thing you see is we need help. Help. Uh, in many different ways. So mm -hmm. hopefully people, if they can spare um, some extra time uh, on many different levels, that's okay. what we're trying to accomplish. So your uh, volunteers, how many volunteers do you currently have? And what are you looking for when you look for a volunteer? How do you screen the applicants? For the volunteer, yeah, um, we I would say we probably I'll, I'll say this we probably have between thirty to fifty volunteers. Wow, uh, the, the thirty kind of operate um, for the cat care yes. portion. Okay, then we have other people who that's not their their thing. Okay, but they help with uh, fundraising events. Oh, uh, wonderful! Again, transportation yeah. is a big one. Transportation to vet visits. Uh, to clinics uh, for for surgery needs, mm. uh, picking up cats. We get calls often for Wonderful. for help in picking up uh, a cat because the person doesn't have transportation, mm. or or the cat has to be um, needs gets so scared that it needs to, uh, you know, somebody to know how to get the cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, what we look for is obviously people who have compassion yes. and understand the needs of of these cats and. And are committed to uh, and dedicated to, you know, finding them a home and mm -hmm. or taking care of them for whatever their needs are. Right. Yeah. So, how do you place a cat appropriately with the best family? Uh, well, we our center is is it's an open environment where people can come in and uh, socialize with the cats directly. Mm -hmm. um, and in the process, uh, we basically talk to every family that comes in pretty extensively mm -hmm. and understanding what they're looking for, what their expectations are, uh, what their needs are, and the needs of the cat. Mm -hmm. And um, we, there is an application process. Okay. So we, we do um, a, ask for information on the caregiver uh, of the animal. And um, if everything falls into place, then there's a contract that we would sign that, that mm -hmm. uh, ch transfers you know, the ownership of the cat from us to them. Mm -hmm. But what we also do is after the the actual adoption is we are there to continue to support oh, that's the good. adoption. So people often call and say, you know, we're, we're having a hard time transitioning mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, certain behavioral issues. Uh, we, we spend quite a bit of time on the phone also talking to just people in general that are looking for some advice and guidance. Oh, that's great. Um, and what we like to, what we like to see is establish a relationship with the adopters. Okay. So that makes sense. If um, and we also, you know, do say that if the cat doesn't work out, they mm -hmm. can bring it back. We we sometimes exchange it because sometimes it's just not the right fit. Okay. Um, and how often does that happen? Whoo! Little hair here. Um, I I would say, you know, I haven't thought about, it, but I say percentage of the time. Um, I, it's probably maybe tw maybe at least twenty percent, if not more, okay. that it is, a cat does not fit in a situation. Okay. Uh, whether it's the wrong home, and or sometimes it's it the cat needs more time to settle in, and yeah. it's not um, it just it's not working out. Yeah. Um, but sometimes the next cat is a perfect match. Okay. You know, so oftentimes you just don't know. It's I call it dating. Mm -hmm. You know, you you might go out with somebody it doesn't mean you're going to get married, but right. the next one might be. The perfect, you know, the perfect person. match. Yeah. Might be your um, soulmate. Yeah. Could be your cat mate. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we always hope that it's the right, mm -hmm. it, that, that we took enough time to try to understand and, and um, meet the needs of the, uh, the adopters that come in. Um, but, you know, sometimes it's reality is such that you have to work with uh, alternatives. Okay. Um, and we're there to obviously. Uh, work with the adopter. Mm -hmm. Also, if uh, down the road, if someone cannot keep their cat, we will yeah. take it back, take it unless back. for some reason we're completely full. Okay. But we, we try to keep that relationship going because things do change, yes. say over five yeah. years or some other period of time. So we, um, you know, we, we will, they'll, they'll have a top priority in terms of returning. Mm -hmm. 
because sometimes it's hard to find a place to uh, to bring cats right. to. Right. Now, the thing is, um, I, my personal story is I adopted two very beautiful cats um, about two years ago, and um, there's their pictures, Chloe and Kingsley, my pride and joy, love them. So um, I want to encourage everyone out there to get involved with the Connecticut Cat Connection because they're just an awesome resource um, to bring love and happiness not only into your own life but into the life of these very beautiful and precious animals. Um, if you are unable to volunteer uh, physically, I would encourage you all to give donations. You know, go to their website, we'll have that up for you. And also um, go to their Facebook. You're on Facebook, right? Connecticut yes. Cat Connection. Yes. And um, stop in. You, where are you guys located? We are in Windsor at 40 Stevens Mill Road. Okay. So we have a beautiful uh, location. Um, and um, it's, you know, hopefully it's uh, people feel very comfortable it's a yeah. it's a nice nice space and yeah it's actually a lot larger than the space if you've been there previously at their old location this location is it's much nicer it's more open um, you can you know just go in and take your time and look at all of the beautiful cats that they have so uh, when I visited there a while back, it, w it was just very nice. It's nestled like in not too far remote off the, the road, but it's in a nice little uh, cul-de-sac. That's mm -hmm. what I want to say. Yeah, cul-de-sac. So um, it's, a, it's a great location. It's great to visit. And so what are your hours right now? Uh, right now, because we, we are operating with volunteers who usually have full t other full-time commitments during mm -hmm. the day, you know, work-wise. So we're open in the evenings, uh, Monday through Friday from 7 p.m. to, excuse me, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. And Saturday, 12 to 4. Oh, nice. Uh, we are... We are looking for extra help to be able to be open on okay. Sundays. Yeah. Uh, so right now that's a little bit up in the air, but um, uh, so right now we're, we're kind of closing on Sundays. Okay. But we're hoping to reopen, uh, be able to reopen once we build up our volunteer base and can get more support. Because on, on the adoption side, it does take somebody who's comfortable mm -hmm. in um, talking with people and making assessments and, okay, and nice. uh, making a match. Nice. A kitty match. Well, we also would like to promote a great resource. Uh, it's a book by Jackson Galaxy called Cat Daddy. And um, this book, this guy, he's just phenomenal. He's like the cat whisperer. And um, he is just, he, he just makes Caesar Milan look like an amateur. This guy is just phenomenal. And so I really hope that everyone goes out and reads this, watch the show, My Cat from Hell. That's an awesome show. Mm -hmm. uh, he he just l has so much great advice and insight on cats. So um, I want to encourage everyone to get involved. If you love cats as much as I do, please, you know, visit the Connecticut Cat Connection on 40 Stevens Mill Road in Windsor. Or in Windsor. Windsor. Yes. Yeah. And it's like near the Pequonic line. Um, Paquanic and kind of like Windsor Locks yes. area. Yep. Yeah. Right off of uh, Rainbow Road. Very good. Know that. Very nice. And they can also go to our website, which is uh, ctcatconnection.org. Okay. And they can also look up uh, the cats we have up for adoption. Adoption, yeah. Um, under available cats and get more information about us there too. Okay. Because everybody loves, you know, uh, kittens. But, you know, kittens can come and go. But these guys, these senior cats, they need homes too. So, and also you do have disabled cats that need homes? We do, we, uh, we have a couple of kitties that are blind. Mm. Uh, occasionally we get one with one leg um, uh, removed, so they're, th they're three-legged, sometimes we have those. And, um, and then we, we have some that are, you know, have, have other needs, medical right. needs as right. well. Yeah, so we try to find homes for for all of them, or even what we call permanent fosters. Mm -hmm. So we would. What that means is that we we would retain responsibility for the cat and its medical needs, mm -hmm. but they just need a home to be in. And oh, sometimes it's hospice. That's wonderful. It's a hospice need. Yeah. Sometimes it's um, a situation where we have a cat that. Um, uh, needs to be quarantined because mm. if s some cats come in and they have a lot of a lot of um, bruises and or 
cuts, you know, we usually right. we, we want to watch them for a period of time, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll put them up for adoption. And but we could do like a permanent um, a foster to perm hire okay. uh, adoption mm -hmm. um, as an alternative. So we have quite a few situations that that would be helpful. Plus. We are also, with kitten season coming up, mm -hmm. um, in need of, of foster homes for, for kittens, for mom and kittens. Right. Um, so that, uh, we're always looking for more, more folks. Right now we have very few. Okay. Um, and that's probably one of the bigger needs we'll have in the next couple months. Okay. So what, where, how, well, actually, how far have you gone to rescue cats? What's the furthest you've ever gone? Um, I'll say just about maybe an hour. Hmm. Um, usually, usually if we're getting help with the situation, they come to us. Okay. But um, you know, we'll 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 venture out if we can get the the help. Okay. Uh, to help get a, a few cats, like we had to get four the other day, that was an hour away okay. uh, over the weekend. And but I think beyond that, it becomes a little bit more. Uh, involved, or we we work with another group that's mm -hmm. closer. Yeah, and sometimes they'll they'll meet us halfway. Okay, um, given the situation, but most times people come to us with with the cats. Okay, it's a little bit more uh, of a challenge to go out and get them. Right. Only, right now, we only have like one or two people who have the time to do that. To do that, and okay. uh, um, can help out with those kind of situations. Okay. But, well, I'm uh, hoping that your volunteer base will expand, you know, from being on uh, our show today. And I'm hoping that also you'll get the funding that you need um, to definitely take care of these precious babies. Um, and tell us about any events that you have coming up. Um, the, we're doing, an, let's see, the next event we're doing it will be actually at the 99 restaurant in Enfield. Okay. Uh, that evening that we're having the event, which the date I can't remember right now, I think it's March 29th, but I'll confirm okay. it. Um, so if you go and have dinner there, they'll give us a portion of the proceeds. Oh, nice. Uh, for the event. Um, then on April 7th, we're having, uh, we're selling tickets for the comedy night in at the uh, Skyline restaurant in Windsor Locks. Oh, very nice. Uh, they bring in three comedians mm. um, uh, for a show. So okay. it's an evening, it's a nine o'clock evening adult thing. Okay. Um, and it's lots of fun, lots of laughter. Um, and it's the, uh, so we're, we're gonna be selling tickets for that. I think it's $25 per person for the, for the show. Okay, uh, People can come early and get dinner, but it's, you know, separate. Okay. Um, and then June 17th, which is a Saturday, we are holding an event at Northwest Park oh, in Windsor. Nice. It's the theme is putting on the dogs for cats. So we're actually pulling in um, dog related events and some groups. Okay. Um, to basically, you know, promote um, pet care in general. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, with the intent of, of, tr of transitioning into a fundraiser, you know, for Cat Connection. Okay. But um, also recognizing there's a lot of dog fam dog uh, owners out there that also have cats. Yes. Um, I've always wondered, how does that work? Um, cats and dogs actually getting along? Uh, they, can, they can make, they can be really great friends. Okay. Um, uh, and sometimes they just don't, you know, that it just doesn't work. Oh. But it also depends on the dog, the size of the dog, mm. you know, the, what the cat has been used to okay. uh, in its previous home. Like like Ellie right here to my my recollection has never been with the dog, so that's not an option for her. Yeah. Um, certainly kittens are, tend to be more adaptable to a, mm -hmm. a, a new situation, yeah. so they usually tend to to work out better. But, um, you know, if we, have, we, if we have cats that have been with dogs, we we try to promote them to the families that already have them that would work out. Okay. So, um, but usually they, they, they can do very well together in a home. Wonderful, and wonderful. Well, I wanna thank everyone for tuning in um, and I wanna thank uh, Marianne Vuig for being with us today from Connecticut Cat Connection. And if you want to get involved in any way, whether it's making a donation, volunteering your time, um, I just ask that you be fully committed, go full throttle. I have had so much joy in my life from adopting from the Connecticut Cat Connection, and I hope that you will too. So what's your number? 
Our number is 860-219-9396. All right, perfect. All right, well, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Reality Scoop. I'm Shonda D, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for tuning in.